Thanks. Hi, I'm Sharon Blaine. I'm in this amazing Goldwell Academy here in New York, and I'm going to take you through a couple of steps of uh, ways to set. I think with the way curls and uh, textures moving, I wanted to show you my techniques, and hopefully you will get something really exciting from that. Decided to bring my trusty little mannequin in because I think it's easy to actually demonstrate how to actually do these sets. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to give that really bubble, voluminous curl, probably slightly 80s in a respect, or even a little bit more like an afro, but a loose tossle curl at the same time. And I have a really great technique for that. And remarkably, it's actually a technique that was used in perming era. So it's called a reverse tong set. So what that means by that is that one tong actually tongs forward and the back end of it tongs backward. But what I do use is two completely different... Actually, I've got another tong which I need. Um, I've got a little baby tong here and then the larger tong is actually going to be the size tong that I'm going backwards. So a lot of times when you're working, and I have this for my... Um, what I've used for my model Madeline, uh, the thing is that sometimes when you have that fine, really soft hair, to get this voluminous curl, it drops out fairly quickly. So my technique is rather unique, probably not overly unique these days, but it's something I've been working on for a while and I really like it. So this is how I'm going to show you how to do it. So my second tong, actually it could be larger than that if you wouldn't mind. Sorry, we're just using one of our tongs to finish setting while we're working here. And also looking for my tail comb. So thank you. Sorry, bear with me for a moment. It's been a little rushed to get here today. Um, so I'll just grab a tail comb from you as well. So first off, when I do this set, I like to have maybe a little hairline left out. So more to personalise how that curl's going to fall around the face. So probably taking, you know, an inch and a half, two inches, depending on how much hair you want to bring down around the face. Then we come through and just bring my trolley over. A couple of little pin curl clips would be fab. Sorry. So what happens after this is, I'm just going to get some pin curl clips as well. I like to clip all my sets down as we work. So the first thing is, when you're working with that finer hair, these trusty little crimpers are probably my go to the best product and the best tool I could recommend to do. And what's going to happen is I'm going to come through the root area and just do one little crimp at the base. So that's going to give sort of that extra texture that that finer hair actually requires. Now, to be completely honest, I wouldn't necessarily need to do this if I had a nice thick head of hair because the volume's already there. So I'm talking finer hair, and that's, I'm doing it purely because that's what I've actually done on my model today as well. So notice the size tong. It's actually quite tiny. And I think that pencil size tong is perfect to give that really tiny little curl that supports that looser curl. Now, if these ends pop out, it's not such a drama. Try to get them in as much as possible. But now, what you can see is what I'm doing is I've crimped the root, but I'm actually winding that tiny little pencil tong towards the face. As I slip it out, we just come through, and I'll take my finger at the base and wrap it nice and tight right to the base and take a small clip and just clip it in. Now, I always clip all my curls. I like to make sure that they're really tight, but at the same time, I also like to know that they're cooling down in the position that I've set them in in the first place. So my next tong, which is going to come backwards, and the sections of your tong is governed by the width of the barrel. So let me see what we've got here. We've got a rather large barrel sitting there, so we're going to take that just a tad wider. Now, I also, for Maddie's hair, even on this movement going backwards, I still actually came in and tonged at the base. So I've just put one little bite in at the, at the base and then come through. Now notice the size of the tong that I have. Notice the size of the sections. And I found this quite remarkable the other day. I was doing a class recently and one of the girls said, I always struggle to know how, width my, how wide my sections would be. And my answer to her is, 
Always look at the diameter, whether it's your round brush, whether it's a setting roller, whatever that may be that you're using, your section, particularly if you're looking for volume on base placement, will always be governed by the tool that you're using. So as I take that down, I, I like to sort of feel the heat penetration. So I don't wear a glove. I'm a bit of a thrill seeker, but I would prefer to feel the heat coming to the surface. And I find that if I wear a glove, the problem that that creates is that I don't get a chance to feel that heat soon enough. And the problem is you might end up burning the hair, which is obviously something we don't want to do. Now, where's my comb again? So once again, taking this little baby out, what we do is exactly the same. So I repeat the same process all the way through, reversing the small tong to come to the front and bringing the larger tong back. And what happens, it creates sort of like a... Um, the support from that little baby tong in the middle totally supports that lovely loose curl that we've got. So they mash together and then they push the big curl out and therefore you'll always be able to keep that volume in the hair and in volume in that curl. How are we going out there? Do we have any questions about my little technique here? Who's hi, hi. Did they come last night to the amazing event that we had? If you haven't seen the Hair Play 2018, you need to just jump onto the Goldwall site immediately. It was the most amazing hair event that um, I've been part of. It was super exciting and the hair was magnificent. Every category and every section that was done was absolutely fantastic. So jump on, live, uh, jump on and have a look at all the videos and all the different uh, feeds that are going on at the moment. So I would continue in this vein. So I'm going to take yet another one back. But what I'll show you after that is just exactly how the side placements go in. And I'll bring my model in to show you the actual setting technique on her head. But I thought it was really important just to show you section by section on the dolly's head so you could actually see how that looks. And then it makes, you e it, makes it a little easier to comprehend when you're seeing the live model because it's a little hard to separate out those curls sometimes. So I take it right down to the root. You can see that I'm on base and it's volume. So it's super important not to be dragging the hair back, but making sure that that tongue sits between the top part line and the bottom part line. And that will ensure every time that you'll have lots of volume and the maximum curl result that you're actually looking for. So for starters, I prepared the hair with um, the Just Smooth product. Now, this is probably my most favorite product. I love the way it smooths the, the cuticle down. It gives it a nice polish. But at the same time, it's actually going to give you um, lots of texture. So the texture with any curl is really important. You can't work with soft hair. You have to make sure that the texture feels a little bit coarser. So the coarser the curl, the coarser the texture is, the better it is and the better the result is going to be. So I've used that um, to prepare with and I've also used it for um, doing my curling as well. So we've blow dried smooth and then we've also curled back with it. So the combination of that double application also gives a lovely, fee a lovely feel and a lovely curl bounce. Now I'm going to move this baby over. So she's gone and now I am replaced by someone very special who's beautiful. And she's going to come in here now. And we're going to sit you down. Just trying to get all these hot tools out of the way because I know I'm going to pick one up and burn my, <coughs> burn my hand. So let's have a closer look at this now because this is exactly the technique I've used on the short hair doll. And I've actually executed it here as well. So I'm working from a side part around the middle of the eyebrow and I've actually shifted that panel of hair around there. So I would imagine that would be about an inch and a half deep. Through the side, I've done a few little sections, mainly obviously the other side of the um, part line, and then a couple forward. So I wanted to bring that curl through around the front. But when I look at her side on, this is what I've just created. I've recreated this section where we're going forward and back and forward and back. So all the way through here, I've crimped the base. I've used the small tong to come forward, the larger tong to come back, took it all the way down to the bottom. And the sectioning here 
to get that to fit in nicely, it's what I would call to fan wind. So I start a diagonal forward section and I walk, work all the way around until I get to the top of the ear where it becomes quite horizontal. And then the horizontal through the back is a little bit more like a brick weave to fit everything together really nicely. So what we're going to do now is drop these clips out and show you what I've done. I always estimate that probably 60% of the time of any, any sort of curling technique is what takes up the overall time for an updo, well, not an updo, but more this type of look. So I've had to work to put the, the actual technique in. Once you drop the clips out, though, it becomes a very, very quick turnaround. So I um, like to put the work in. I think it's really important to make sure you prepare well. And there's this cliche that I like to use, if you don't prepare, you prepare to fail. Another thing that I made sure I did with um, Maddie's hair today was make sure that because it was so fine, that I did what I call my double mousing technique. So with her, I use the diamond gloss. I've come through with a lightweight mousse to build up the hair a little bit, and then I've smoothed it through with a round brush. And that's polished the hair. At the same time, it's given me some nice texture. And then, of course, I've gone through with this setting pattern and the just smooth all the way through while I tongued. So what you can see is this really spring, look at this little tiny, tiny curl, really tiny sort of spirally curl that's in there. But at the same time, you can see this looser, softer curl. And when I, when I brush them out, you see the, the roots are supported, or the roots of the tiny tongue supports the loose curl. So that's how you get this beautiful tousled curl. And obviously, it always looks super fantastic when you're working on a beautiful model and who's got blonde hair. I love a blonde haired curl. So very carefully, I'm just going to sort of rake through. But I will get her to also, at the same time, just tilt her head forward, because if I'm looking for volume, I want to over-direct the hair a little bit more towards the front. So I will take, take a paddle brush, and I'll start gently just brushing and breaking through the set. So my hand is on the base here, on her forehead, and very gently, gently I'll take all of that into my hand. And if I could maybe just have a little spray of diamond gloss, I'd be very, very happy with that. So I'll get you to hold that for one moment. Diamond Gloss is a really unique product. And what I find, a lot, of people, um, a lot of people don't understand the importance of putting that little bit of oil in it. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of feedback I get is that, oh, why would you put oil in it? Because, you know, it might make it soft or slippery or whatever, whatever. But this is a unique product. And what I explain about Diamond Gloss when I use it is, when I spray it on my hand, you can feel it, but it tends to just work in really quickly. So it doesn't leave like a real slippery, slimy feel to your hand, for the want of a better word. It actually sort of dries in. So that gives that lovely, shiny, glossy feel to the hair without, no, without the fear that the oil is going to be too weighty and weigh the hair down. So I'm, I'm breaking all of this up. So I, I know some of you out there are probably thinking, oh my God, she's just going to brush the whole lot out. But I never fear that. I always believe if I put a good set in in the beginning, I should never have to fear about the outcome at the end. So really brushing through and really smoothing it so you get that fabulous sort of luxury finish to the hair. So we're just going to bring her back now, shake her out. And all of a sudden, you can see this gorgeous curl starting to emerge. So it's just a matter of just smoothing it around. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of product, and this is a new product called Accentu Accentuating, Accentuating um, Finishing Cream. It's, once again, it's sort of like a product that will put a little bit of moisture back in there, which is so beautiful. And at the same time, it just gives me that chance to get my fingers in and shake that hair out. Look at that gorgeous, floppy, beautiful curl. And look at her. Is she, like, not too fantastic? Look at her. She's gorgeous. I just knew you were going to look good with this. So as I shift it around, I can just pull it soft and loose around her so you get that beautiful sort of soft, 
texture. And I think this is just so beautiful for, you know, coming into spring, looking for that just disheveled texture and moving away from this traditional wave that we've been seeing for a long time, this, you know, just down sort of loose drop sort of look. I think this is just gorgeous. We got some likers out there. Do they like her? Yeah. And look at me massaging that scalp. It's a, bit, a little bit like teasing the scalp. All it is is a circular movement like you'd be doing at the basin if you were sort of massage, massaging someone's hair in a shampoo. But it actually works so beautifully just to give that volume. And look at that. It's a really, really simple, beautiful, soft, dreamy sort of curl. There is no way with this degree of hair, like it is your finest hair that you could possibly ever work with. It's very soft, very, you know, very fine hair, down to about the shoulders. There is no way you could have possibly have got a result like that um, if you hadn't have put that degree of curl, that set in it. And what I'm trying to do is just massage those roots where they are, you know, a little bit more textured with that uh, crimper. And the mini crimper is just beautiful. It's just got this gorgeous sort of bite in it. It's, so it's not like what I would call the micro crimper. And the micro crimper is more the one that's sort of more shallow. This one just seems to bite in a little bit more and gives you the opportunity to really support that curl. Just gorgeous, huh? Hmm? Yeah, I'll show it again. So I'm working through here with the oil. So the diamond gloss, once again, see how it's just putting that little bit of sort of that cleaner curl finish. So it's important to make sure that when you do any sort of curl that there are some sort of little clean curls amongst it and it's not looking just like a big fuzzy ball. We left that big fuzz um, you know, behind in the 80s. So I think this is sort of the new slant on the 80s where it's, you can see some degree of technique within the actual curl itself. All right, I think that's sort of about done. So I haven't even put any hairspray in that. But she's sort of ready for a photo session, hey? You like her? I think she looks great. Thank you, ma'am. You. you look very sexy with that curl. And well, I'm going to just show very quick, so you can leave. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be replaced by a mannequin head now. And let me show you now with a mannequin head the next set. So this is um, a flat-based dry finger wave. And what I mean by a dry finger wave, it's not set wet, it's actually set on dry hair using a straightening iron. So the first thing that I always teach um, in my classes, and this is one of the, one of the techniques I teach, um, particularly in my boot camp, is how to create the perfect wave every single time. And how I go about that is, is by forming this wave before I begin in any setting technique. So once again, coming through now with the smooth um, control. And I like to form a beautiful wave movement. So I take the hair back at 45 degrees. And because I'm a left-hander, I hold my finger right alongside, parallel to that part line. And I shift the hair forward on the opposite side of that movement at 45 degrees forward. So you can see straight away now, I've got quite a strong wave movement already there in the front. Before I do anything more, I take my tail comb and I just slice that off so I can have the perfect C-shape oblong is what it's called. So I use my finger here as a guideline and I run that tail comb along the edge of it and really section off that so strongly that it becomes what it is, an oblong shape wave movement. So from there now, I'll take 
a tailco, I'm sorry, not a tailco, my dryer, and I'll come through. So I'm just going to hold down the edge of this. And with my dryer, what's important is the dryer can only shift in one direction. So I'm going to dry from the forehead back to the crown. So I'm pushing it right in at the middle of that C, all the way through until I've actually dried that movement into place. Take that, I've got a couple of little strands wanting to fly away. Just one more, one more dry. And this is why I adore using this product, because it dries nice and quickly. It, for, it keeps the shape well. Thank you. It keeps the shape well. And when I brush through this now, or comb through this, you can see that it's dried into that first movement. See how I've got that perfect wave straight away? And with that perfect wave, what I could do now is I come through and set it. So this is why I call it a dry pin curl set, because it is not set from wet to dry. But I'm now going to take a diagonal section coming towards the front, separate it off, have a very light mist of the smooth control, because you don't want to wet it so much that you're expecting your uh, straighteners to work too hard. So just a light mist, like so. And I like to just get my knuckles right in at the base so I can flat wrap the hair around my two fingers. So always around the two fingers, knuckles in at the nape, and just feed the hair onto your fingers. And see these little ends, which are an absolute nuisance. I always like to take them up towards the top then when I peel it off again, they're sort of locked in. Now as I come through, I'm go, go take the straightener and I'll work from the middle out. So I work from the base out to the edge and at the same time pushing it back in and then just keeping it together so I don't want to sort of let it drop out. And from there I'll take a single prong clip, just get my little ends in nicely. And I'm coming in at 45 degrees, so I'm slipping the pin underneath so I don't avoid, uh, so I avoid any demarcation on the top section, and I slip it in underneath and catch that pin curl. And I'll do a couple more for you so you can see that, because this is really the, probably my signature technique, which everybody on hair, um, hair brain now is going to know, aren't they? How are we going there? Are we getting any little chats? So see how I've got this with my thumb? It's holding it at all times. There's the ends which I'm dragging back right in up high. That way then when I peel it off my fingers, they're more likely to lock in. Always slightly diagonal, so slightly, well, slightly elevated, I guess, at the roots, and for the want of a better word. And then I feed it right back through till I've heated it up. And now I'll bring these little curls down on top of the last curl. So you'll always end up on top of the last curl. And it's absolutely important to make sure that each section is small enough that it's not so thick that the heat won't penetrate. So you really want to get the heat to penetrate from the top surface to the root area. And the best way to do that is not putting too much hair in each curl. Notice my knuckles haven't left the, uh, the base, so I'm actually winding the head down to my fingers on the base. And slight elevation here, just to get that tongue in underneath. So what I've done with my next model, I've actually done a side panel with this technique, and I'm going to bring her on to explain a little more of her setting pattern. But a lot of the setting patterns that I do very much govern an outcome. So this is definitely the setting pattern I recommend when you're looking for that flat wave that you want to just lay flat, sexy wave, no volume. It's very much that's what it is. If you're looking for volume, of but this is the set for that particular look. All right, so let's move this baby out of the way. Thank you. And here's my gorgeous Courtney. Well, I've had to lower this chair a little bit for Courtney because she is a little taller. Oh, good, she's in the frame. That's super fab. Now, I'm going to just swing you to this side. 
So what's so great about that technique is you don't have to do the whole head. You can do, do a panel on the side. So what we have done is we've done this beautiful wave through the heavy side and we've done a larger curl, just movement and a loose curl through the back. Take a good, a good look at this. So this was the section that I just showed you. This is the section that I've just demonstrated. But when you drop to the section below that, keep in mind that the top section all move forward. When you come to the second row, each curl is actually going to be going backwards. So the next row went forward, the row underneath came to the back, and then the row at the bottom came forward. So what I've created is this S-shaped movement by setting each pin curl or each line of pin curl in the reverse. So it's known as a reverse pin curl. It's also known as a dry pin curl as well. With the back section, we've done the same pattern in a sense where I've taken all the hair on the base from right to left. The next section came from left to right and we've reversed that, but we've used a large tong. And the large tong was this size. Now this hair is the, thick, the thickest head of hair I think I've seen for a while. So it was quite a challenge just to uh, get all of that in in time. But we decided to show you just this panel because I think it's really nice to see that you don't have to do the whole head in this technique. You can use it just in little panels around the head to create the, the, you know, the effect that you're looking for. So are we ready to drop it down? All right. So I've got this gorgeous assistant here. And Ali is all the way from Estonia um, in near Finland. So if we have anyone watching, then you might recognize Ali from her country. So she's come into New York to be with me to assist me in my classes and to um, assist me with the show last night. And we had an amazing team from the Gold World Camp come in as well. I feel a little sad that it's all over because it has been months of planning the show and now it's gone. So I guess you feel sometimes like you have a little bit of a uh, withdrawals when you do something big like this and then it's back to normal again. So check it out, you know, it's absolutely incredible. So this hair, there is no doubt about it, it was quite dry on the ends, quite, quite, quite coloured, lots had various processes on it. The thing that I find with this sort of hair is you must smooth and polish this hair before you even begin to start curling. I liken this situation of if you take a crushed shirt and you put your clothes iron on it without smoothing it flat first, all you're going to do is actually crush the creases in a little more, but it's going to be in a curl position. So I like to smooth my hair out perfectly, so then when I curl it back in, I get that beautiful quality curl and that shine. And the shine is absolutely vital for that polish and finish. We often see these beautiful advertisements from product companies with luxury curl, and we often wonder why our curls never look quite so great. And generally, it's because of the lack of preparation in the beginning, and the curls look dried and fried when you drop them down. But I prepared this really well to make sure that wasn't going to be the problem. So those curls look great. My pin curls look fabulous. I'm very happy with them. Notice I'm always working with a single prong clip. I really do like working with those. They, they're much easier to put in. They don't mark the hair. So they, have, they are, the best to, are the best clips to get your hands on. So I'm going to give her a nice big brush and see what we end up with. So when I brush, I'm much happier to use a paddle brush. I find the paddle brush really helps me to find what I've created. You can see already the waves already there, just based on the way we've set that. Now what's key to this is if you remember when I first demonstrated that wave movement, the first thing I said was take the hair back at 45 degrees. If you fail to do that when you brush through, your wave movement probably won't be as strong as it could be if you did it any other way. But you can see we've got that perfect wave. Just by doing that dry pin set, it's absolutely stunning. You're going to be able to go out tonight, girlfriend, aren't you? Look at her, beautiful makeup, gorgeous curls. So if you um, get a chance to look at the pictures from last night from Hair Play, 
Um, one of my, my most stunning models was the Queen at the end, um, Malif Malisifid. Did I get that right this time? That's a tough word, isn't it? And this was her. She was the black-haired queen. Um, she surely doesn't look like her today, though, does she? So once again, just to fix the hydration issue at the back, I'll come through once again and put some of the oil in it. This set was done at fast speed, and we've got a, a beautiful result. It was done in half an hour, would you say? Yeah, about half an hour. If I had done the full head of pin curls, it probably would have been an hour, which was why we decided to mix it up and show you the two techniques. So it's the same setting pattern, but it's done with a straightener, and then the other one's done with a tong. So I like brushing it through. So I don't put a lot of air in my hair. When I brush, I like to control the hair right through. I don't flip it around and put air through it, because sometimes I that also creates a static in the hair, which is not so nice. So using my fingers now, I'm just going to rake it through and just see what we've ended up with. Gorgeous hair. Great result. Swing it around. Let's see that other side now. So I'll come back through a, with a wide tooth comb. I'm not going to actually position the ways too much, but I do like to comb that section when I do the... Uh, dry pin set with a ta with a, a, a open let me go back again with a wide tooth comb i feel that when i do that i get the hair to shift better so by shifting the hair better it means that the teeth are actually digging from the outer surface into the roots whereas if i used a shallow tooth comb or a narrower tooth comb i wouldn't be able to dig right through and then when i push my wave movement in i wouldn't be able to shift it exactly where i wanted it to go so you can see there, look at that, absolutely stunning. Any feedback on that, uh, on that camera? Look at that, it's just gorgeous, huh? Any questions while we're finishing up here today? Have the viewers got any questions? Who is that? David. Who's David? We got a last name for David. David <laughs> okay. See how the width of that wave is? Just because we've done that panel through there. So that, can you believe, is done with just a straightening iron. But it's about the actual direction that we've set it in and the way we've finished it out. So this is your glamour, beautiful glamour wave. The quality of the hair looks amazing. And that's very much about the products that we use to prepare the hair with. It's just stunning, isn't it? I'm a bit in love. What do you think on the outside there? Are you happy with that? Did we do a good job? Yeah, it's good. So just a light spray. One of the things that I will always say is that spray should not be holding the result. Anything you do, it should be able to manage itself it's without having to use a can of hairspray to keep the result happening. So I've always been about making sure that the set is in there, everything's beautiful, and the reason why it's working is because of the work that you put into it in the first place. If you don't put the work in, then you're going to have to put a can of hairspray on it. And that's what kills hair. That's what I think makes it look sort of, I don't know, too producty, not natural, not beautiful, not all of those things. So I much prefer to put the work in, and I would say 60% of the work to prepare this hair. And then as you can see how quickly as I've pulled it out, you know, not even 40% of the time is related to the dress out. So, oh God, I want to take you home. You are just gorgeous, just beautiful. Look at that. Couldn't ask for a nicer result, huh? Just break it up. Give it a little massage on the scalp. And there she is. Photo ready. Ready for the Met Ball tonight, huh? She's probably not crazy enough for the Met Ball. 
But even you can... Pardon? So, you know, even just using the tongs, so you can see the difference between um, your tongue set, so you can see that beautiful sort of more looser, broken up wave uh, versus the actual set where we've done the, the pin curl set. They're very different in their outcome because this is very, very staged and manicured. This is, can give you a little bit more of that looser, disheveled look, but still that beautiful wave as well. But I couldn't ask for better a better model. So can we have my other girl in? And I'll stand you, girl. Oh, should I stand you up? Mm. <laughs> That's the question. I'll just leave you there because I know what's going to happen when I stand you up. <laughs> She's been sitting out there, a little bit of a massage here. These are my girls. Gorgeous, gorgeous sets. Crazy, crazy curls. How beautiful. And they're all ready for spring. They th what do you think, girls? Do you like your look? I love it. Yeah? Yeah. yeah? Are you going to go out tonight? Probably not. Oh, <laughs> God, you're ready. You're ready to go. So I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration on setting. And these are the type of techniques I teach in my classes. So if you're ever looking for a class to really learn, you can uh, Google me on Sharon Blaine. But last but not least, how amazing is it that I can be here in New York, in Goldwell, uh, doing this for you? And to be honest, my key products I've just used. Every time I do anywhere where I can uh, have my choice of products, these are the ultimate products that I always use. They're just sensational. So think about the diamond gloss. Remember, we uh, put that little bit of shine in the hair. It makes it more manageable, more workable. Um, obviously, the smooth control is, is what I blow dried with and then what I tonged with. So you don't need another product. I did put a little bit of extra mousse in here just to get some texture to before I got the curl started. That was super important. It was a three level hold. And then finally, look, we haven't really put hairspray in it at all. It's not needed because if you put a great reset in, you don't need to be supporting it with a big can of hairspray. So hopefully you, hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, thank you so much for watching and um, stay tuned. I'm sure we're going to see you around shortly. Thank you.